When I was a kid, I used to live with my parents in this small town. There was about only 70 to 80 people, maybe, living there at the same time. I remember the good times I had with my friends. Being outside all day, playing different games and getting into trouble. Our favorite game was Ding Dong Ditch. We used to terrorize our neighbors that way. Our neighbors were kind, friendly people, but there was one neighbor. Everybody was scared of him. He was mentally ill and our parents warned us not to mess with him and to stay away from his house. His name was Martin and he was about 35 years old at the time. Martin was really creepy. He used to get out in the middle of the night and he would sneak into people's backyards just to look through their windows and make creepy noises. One time he came to my house and my dad caught him and ran out of the house to confront him, but he didn't catch him. The next day my dad went to his house to confront him and told him that if he comes near my house again, he would kill him. After that, every time Martin saw me outside, he would smile at me in a creepy way and I remember being terrified by him. Now when I was 18 years old, I moved out of my parents' house and I started living on my own. I found a job in the city as a security guard in a nightclub that was about four hours away from my parents' house, so I just needed to move there. All my friends stayed in the city where I grew up though. Five years had passed. Some of my friends that were older than me got married. Some of them got kids, including my best childhood friend, Steven. One day I texted Steven that I will be in town because I got a little bit of time off due to an injury. Some drunk guy hit me with a beer bottle and made a small cut in the back of my head. I could have gone back to work, but I just used the situation to get some time off and I was able to go visit my parents and my friends. The next day I went to see my parents and spend some time with them. We had lunch together and then I went to go see Steven. He lived just a few houses from mine. When I got there, we grabbed some beers and then we went to his backyard to hang out. He seemed to be happy to see me, but something was wrong. I could see it in his eyes. So I decided to ask him what was wrong. He said it was nothing special, but I made him tell me. His wife left him for some other guy and left him and his daughter. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He never mentioned it to me when we spoke on the phone or texted, and we did that a lot. He said it wasn't the only problem. He needs to go to a town that's about six hours away from our town to a job interview because he lost his job and that he needed to move there if he gets the job there. He said that he had something to ask me, but he was embarrassed. I told him to ask me that I would do everything for him. He asked me to babysit his daughter, Emma, for two days while he was away because he couldn't bring her with him. I said no problem, and then we continued drinking our beer and having fun. Stephen told me to come to his house the next day at 7 a.m. The next morning I came to his house. Stephen was waiting in the front yard with his daughter, Emma. I said hello to Emma, and Stephen explained to her that I will be babysitting her for the next two days while he is out of town. She seemed really happy about that. I could see that Stephen was worried, but I assured him that everything was going to be okay. He kissed Emma and then left. That day, the weather was beautiful. First, we went to the park. Then we went to my parents' house for lunch. Then after that, it was getting dark. So I told Emma that we needed to go home. On our way home, I was holding Emma's hand. And I was looking at my phone texting Stephen about the day. I was talking to Emma, and I was still looking at my phone when I felt Emma's hand squeeze harder. And then I stopped talking. So I looked up, and I saw Martin. I haven't seen him for years, but he looked really old now. But he still had that creepy look in his eyes. I could see that Emma was scared of him, so I picked her up. The whole time Martin and I didn't break eye contact. We finally got home and I put Emma down and I locked the door. She said that she was really afraid of Martin and that he hurt some kids. I calmed her down and assured to her that she is safe with me. 
We then watched some cartoons and then Emma went to bed. Emma was asleep, so I called Stephen to tell him that everything was fine and that Emma was sleeping. He had just arrived to the hotel, and we continued talking over the phone. After about 10 minutes of talking, I decided to ask Stephen if the kids were still afraid of Martin, and he said yes. He also told me that some strange things had happened in our town. So I asked, what, what things? What are you talking about? He said that four kids were missing and that he doesn't trust anyone anymore except for me. I was really shocked to hear this. We continued talking for about five more minutes and then he said he needed to get some sleep and that he will check on me and Emma in the morning. After our conversation, I went on the internet and I started to search any news articles about these missing kids. Come to find out it was true. Four kids were missing, one boy and three girls. They were missing for over a month. Eventually, I fell asleep in the living room on the couch. It was 2 a.m. and I was woken up because I heard someone walking around in the house and some clicking noise at the door. I went to the door and the clicking noise stopped. I looked through the window, but I couldn't see anyone. Then I checked all of the windows and there was no one outside. Then I went to go check on Emma. She was sleeping. I went back to the living room and something caught my eye. I saw a shadow outside. I opened the front door and stepped outside. Someone was standing behind the tree in front of the house. I got closer to see, and it was Martin. I got furious and told him to fuck off, and if I saw him again, I will kill him with my bare hands. He just looked at me and smiled and then started to walk towards his house. I got back inside and went into the bathroom to take a shower to calm myself down. I was in the shower for maybe 20 minutes when I heard glass breaking. I quickly went outside of the bathroom and I could see broken glass on the floor and Martin. He was trying to get inside of the house. I started running toward him to kick his ass when I saw he had a knife. I grabbed his hand immediately and tried to take the knife from him. He tried to stab me a couple of times, but he didn't. He just cut my hand a little. After about two minutes of wrestling and punching him, he let go of the knife and I got on top of him and started to punch him in the face. Then I heard Emma screaming. I looked up. She was standing there in front of me, looking at me while I was punching Martin. I told her to go to the bathroom and lock the door. That was when I felt the worst pain in my life. Martin had grabbed the knife somehow and stabbed me in the leg. He pushed me away and started to run towards Emma. She was screaming still. I managed to grab him by the leg when he got up and he fell face forward on the ground. I got on his back, grabbed his hair and started banging his head on the floor. After the second blow, he was unconscious. I quickly grabbed him and grabbed my phone and locked us in the bathroom. I was bleeding really bad, so I put a towel over my leg and tried to tighten it. I called the police and explained everything to them. The police came in about 20 minutes with six patrol cars. I went outside when I heard the sirens. Martin was gone. The police officer called an ambulance because I did mention that I was hurt and we stayed with him while the others searched Stephen's house. Five minutes later, I heard something going on inside. We heard a gunshot. The police officers that were in the house came out with Martin. He was in handcuffs, and he was looking at the ground. When I saw him, I fell unconscious. I woke up in the hospital the next day. Emma, Stephen, my mom, and my dad were all in this room with me. They all hugged me when I opened my eyes. The first thing that I asked was, did they catch Martin? Then my mom asked Emma if she could look at some of her toys out in the hallway. The two of them left the room. My dad told me that Martin was in jail and that the police went into the house. They found the missing kids 
and they found evidence linking Martin to several murders that have taken place in the surrounding cities in recent years. After a while, Martin confessed to everything. To give you some sort of idea of how the store looked that I, female 19, worked at, looks like. Imagine a big squared warehouse. At the very front of the store are the front lanes, entrance and exit. And at the very, very, very back of the store is the electronics department. Once you walk down past the front lanes, going down towards the market, there's a big walkway that leads down to the electronics and you could see some of the book aisles, but that's about it. Two nights ago, I closed. We usually close at midnight on the weekends and we were pretty short staffed. Many people called out and one of those people were supposed to be there in the toys department, which is right across from the electronics. Usually toys and electronics are pretty busy, but that night there wasn't really anyone shopping around these departments. There are all call buttons that guests could press that will notify team members where service is needed. So now it's about 45 minutes before the store closes. I have to put all of the Apple products away in the smart cart and bring it to the stock room in the back room warehouse. As soon as I unlocked the stock room, I started to feel extremely uncomfortable. I've been in there before many times, but for some reason it felt like there was someone waiting around the corner in that stock room to scare me. I pushed the cart in and locked the door, and then I walked quickly back to the department. As I was approaching my work area, a call button started going off. Service needed in electronics. Who is responding? But as I was walking towards the call button, I didn't hear or see anyone. Mind you, I was pretty close to the call button so I don't think they could have walked away that fast. I cleared the call and turned around and grabbed a few carts when the call button went off again. Service needed in electronics. 30 seconds remaining. Who is responding? I cleared that call already, so I was a bit confused to why it still needed the countdown and the fact that I turned my back for not even two seconds and the button goes off again kind of scared me. I cleared the call and went back to work. After that, nothing really happened. 10 minutes before the store closes, everyone is supposed to clear their departments by walking down the aisles and checking for guests. I was walking down the toy department when I noticed that there was a guest looking at some board games. His back was faced towards me, so I didn't get a good look at him. I told him that the store was closing in about 10 minutes but he didn't even look at me. He just mumbled something and started walking away. Five minutes before the store closed, I was walking back up to the employee's room to clock out when I felt like there was someone walking behind me. I turned around and there's no one there, so I just disregarded it. Suddenly, I heard one of the Apple alarms going off, and since there was still some time on the clock, I kind of just ran back to the electronics to turn it off but I noticed that there was no one coming from that department. I did another quick walk around through the toys and electronics, and I saw the same man standing in the exact same aisle where I told him five minutes before that the store was closing. I reminded him that he needed to make his way towards the front, and he just raised his hand, back still facing towards me, and walked away. I followed him to make sure that he was walking towards the front, once I reached that employee's room, I just walked in and figured the front lanes would take care of it. So now it's midnight. The store was now officially closed, and I was one of the last people to walk out of that employee's room. I'm walking towards the front when I just so happened to look down the walkway that leads to the electronics. This is when I see the same man walking down the book aisle towards the toys. This time I yell, Sir! and start running down the walkway to catch up to him. But by the time I get down there to the book aisle, he's disappeared. 
I literally walked back through both departments to check if there was anyone, and I didn't see them. The Apple alarms are going off again, so I walked back to disable it, and then I started hearing boxes. There were boxes falling in the direction where I had previously seen the man, and of course, I walk down to find a huge mess of toys on the ground, but see no one. I start yelling and saying that the store was closed, that he had to leave. Once again, the Apple alarm goes off again, but I was too scared to walk up that aisle. So I ran the opposite way towards the front of the store. That's when I notified the team lead that there was some man in the back of the store who wouldn't leave and causing a mess. She told me to leave and that she would take care of it, so I just went home. Today I walked into work and the security and the team lead from the other night asked me if I could come into the office. They showed me some footage from the two nights before. The footage showed me talking to absolutely no one. The man was not on the footage at all. The camera footage shows me pressing the call buttons, walking away coming back to clear them. The footage shows me setting off the Apple alarms and disabling them. The footage showed me knocking over the toys and running away. I am completely shocked and I don't know what to do. It all started when I made my new friend. We will say her name is Jennifer. Jennifer and I were best friends. Although, it was kind of weird because she was really popular. She was the pretty girl in school and I was known more as the lonely, creepy outcast. Anyways, we would spend all of our time together at school. And to be honest, I started developing feelings for her. We would skip class together as well and find any excuse to meet up during school. But for some reason, she was always too busy after school and on the weekends. I thought she liked me too, until she started dating the biggest, most muscular jock I've ever seen. Like ever. I'm like talking his arms were like the size of sculpted milk jugs. Now I know what you might be thinking. Is the writer of this going to be the stalker of this girl? And the answer is no. After remaining friends for a few months longer, she told me I was too depressing to be around and told me to go kill myself. But that's another story that I'll tell one day. It ties into the stalker story because the stalker showed up after she told me that. I very vividly remember the first night it happened. Those eyeballs looking through the living room window at 3 a.m while I'm on my PC playing games. I turn my head and I see just two eyes through the window. I remember thinking, is that just my reflection? And then I got up and walked closer. Mind you, I'm in my boxers at 3 a.m. home alone. So I get closer to the window and the eyes blinked. They blinked and as I got right up to the window, the flash of a camera went off, and the eyes were gone. Fast forward about two weeks after the frightful night where I had to change my boxers. I'm in class now. Jennifer, from earlier in the story, is sitting behind me. Her huge protein-packed boyfriend is sitting next to her. I can hear them whispering behind me. Here's how their conversation went. Her. I kind of feel bad for him. I understand why you told me to tell him to leave me alone, but he just looks so miserable. Him. It's okay, I feel bad too now, but he was bringing you down and you're happier now. I'm sure he will be okay. Her. Yeah, I hope so, but he should have new friends soon, as long as the new girl in the back of the class keeps staring at him like that. Now don't get me wrong, Jennifer and her boyfriend weren't bad people. They may seem like it, but in all honesty, I was just in a rough place. 
so I'm sorta glad she ended up getting happier with someone she truly loved. It was the new girl's comment that got me though. New girl? What new girl? I don't see it. Wait, why does she look familiar? And for some crazy reason, it didn't click in my brain. I didn't make the connection, yet. So fast forward a month. I've started noticing someone drawing my name inside hearts on the desks and the tables, and even my locker at school. I didn't know whether to feel weirded out or feel good, knowing somebody thought that I was worth liking. Now I needed to know who it was. That weekend, I went to a friend's house. It's about midnight on a Saturday, and me and my friend were saving up enough money for a pack of cigarettes. It was a pack of Newports, and it was too cold outside to smoke outside, so we went into the bathroom, turned on the fan, and started to smoke. About halfway through my cigarette, I could have sworn I heard someone giggling quietly. My first thought was, how the hell is he laughing and smoking like that at the same time? And then he points it out. He says, why do you keep giggling, dude? I told him probably about a hundred times that it wasn't me. We then heard a crash in the living room. We both rushed out, but there was nobody there. But the back door was wide open. We look at each other, and then I run, shut and locked the back door, and then we barricaded ourselves in the room. Two days later, I get a text from an unknown number. It's a picture. A picture of a girl with her face scribbled out, standing in my friend's living room two days before. Now I was scared. I didn't know what or why this was happening to me. I showed my friend the picture and he says, I fucking know her. I went wide-eyed and asked who it was. He replies, isn't that the girl who came to our school not too long ago? I can tell by that jacket. I told him there's no way of knowing based off of that jacket. But then, he started laughing. I asked him what's so funny and he says, Remember that girl that I used to date back in middle school? That you met one time because she was from another school? Well, that's her. He just keeps laughing and laughing. At this point, I'm just dumbfounded. Not at the fact of it's his ex, but that she found where I live and she took pictures of me. The next day, Tuesday at school, I confront her. I asked her why she was stalking me, and she just looks at me, clearly having no clue what I'm talking about. She claims that she doesn't even know me. The stalker wasn't her, and at this point, I didn't know what to do. I started staying in my room more, which has no windows, and locking the door. Nothing happened for a while. I thought I was free, but that's when I found it. A note in my room saying, why do you try to hide from me? I just want you to love me as much as I love you. Just accept me. Meet me on the football field at 9 p.m. on Sunday. I did what any curiously terrified person would do. I didn't call the police. I went to the football field. So, long story short, come to find out the stalker, whom of which was a girl, was one of Jennifer's ex-best friends who knew me from conversations she had with Jennifer. I guess she thought me and her were the same, and that the girl that we trusted betrayed us both, so we were destined to be together. At this point, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't freak out, I just stood there. And then she hugged me and told me she knows my pain, the depression, the hate from others. She told me that it's okay. And then she ran off. I just stood there, not knowing what to say or do or anything. I never saw her again. Never got any more notes or pictures or anything. The scariest part, when I asked Jennifer about her, apparently Jennifer so-called ex-best friend didn't exist. Jennifer didn't know the girl and neither did I.
Hello everyone. I just wanted to say thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you really like these type of stories, make sure to comment down in the comment section. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you do as well. I've got a lot of content and a lot more coming, so just know that. And our community is doing nothing but growing. Make sure to check out the links in the description as well. My Twitter, Instagram, everything like that is in there, including my Gmail if you want to submit a story. Stay safe, stay scary, and I'll see you in the next one.